here for some school of chess. Happy to bring you another quick tidbit of chess knowledge. Get your rating up, get your strengths uh, increasing, win more chess games. Today, um, I want to talk to you about the Nachmanson Gambit. Okay, this opening took down Magnus Carlsen um, pretty nicely. Um, and honestly, is so complicated that even computers don't even understand what's going on fully. Let's take a look. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. It starts off as a normal Italian, and they play the two knights. d4, the open variation. e takes d4, castles kingside. And black sees another free pawn here and takes right here. Now, the line that's been played for a very long time is rook to e1, and after d5, it gets pretty interesting. Knight takes d5, queen takes d5, knight c3, with this kind of double attack and yet double pin from the queen and from the rook. So there is no knight takes knight because it's illegal. Rook takes king, and pawn takes knight would result in queen takes queen. And it gets pretty interesting from here. But it's a tried and true system, and if you're an experienced chess player, you know that people know how to react to this. However, here comes the Nachmanson. It's slightly different and yet so powerful. Knight to c3, right away. Seems crazy. Again, this is an advanced opening, okay? So if you are an intermediate player, I, I suggest you stick with your standard principles. But, you know, if you want to take a shot, uh, for some advanced chess, here you go. Now, most players here are going to see the string knight from this pawn, and they're going to take it. And we are not done yet. Bishop takes f7 check. Black is already in huge trouble. Okay? I'm going to tell you right now that what you're about to see is totally crazy. However, if black plays the best in this position, it turns out to be a draw. And yet there are so many pitfalls. Not taking... The bishop is pretty ridiculous because the king's going to have to get, you know, drawn out anyway. So king takes f7, queen to d5 check. And black already has some serious issues, okay? The best move here is king back to e8. The alternatives running out into the open did not seem appealing. We are not going to take back this knight right away. Rook to e1. We are going to get as many pieces involved in going after this king that is stuck in the middle, right? At this point, it will only hurt white more or hurt black more to try and be extra greedy and play a move like c takes b2, okay? Because after rook takes uh, e4 check bishop here and bishop takes b2, this position is just a total nightmare for black. Guarding here is basically unrealistic. Um, and with moves like rook at e1 coming, it's just a total, total nightmare. Instead, what I think most players are going to play here is you have to accept that the knight is a dead piece and play bishop to e7, rook takes e4. Now in this position, black is up four points, okay? That is a winning material advantage most of the time. But black can't castle. White's pieces are super centralized and ready to attack. And here, black can totally mess up. One of my favorite pitfalls in the Nachmanson is if, like, it, a lot of players here might see the idea that because of this pin here, we want to increase the pressure on that pinned bishop and play bishop g5, rook a to e1. And some players here might play pawn to h6 to avoid this from happening and are going to be super shocked when you hit them with bishop takes h6. Total crushing move. If rook takes here, mate in one, queen g8 mate. If they play pawn takes, we got rid of their g pawn. Queen to h5 check. Only move king f8, rook to f4 check, going to g8 or g7 would be a very quick death to queen f7 mate. And if bishop to f6 blocking, queen to g6, there is no good defense against the incoming rook takes f6, and this is just going to be, you know, game over. For example, pawn takes, rook takes check, and here. And 
mate is very, very soon to follow. I'm going to show you actually right now what Black's best defense is against the Nachmanson. The best defense right now is to not try and stop bishop g5, but to focus on development by opening up this bishop and taking away e5. Bishop to g5. Pawn takes b2. I know it seems insane for black to do this move, but having this almost queen at white's uh, doorstep really, really can cause enough complication to uh, stop this maybe. Rook a to e1. And here we've got to be so, 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 so careful. I'll tell you right now that the best defense for black here is actually to play rook, F, rook f8. The idea is to bring this rook up and give some defense to this bishop, which is getting totally and utterly piled up on, okay? But here is where, at worst, okay, at worst, you all, you can get out with a draw with this amazing little neat sacrifice. Queen takes c6 check. Pawn takes c6, check, only move, check, only move, check. And at this point, you have a windmill perpetual. You can play king e8, rook e7, check, king d8, rook g7, check, and you can claim your threefold repetition. So again, I highly encourage you to explore the Nachmanson Gambit. It was strong enough to take down Magnus Carlsen. Um, and so it is definitely strong enough for you to play in both blitz and over the board tournament uh, games. Um, however, you know, black, you know, with best black defense, you know, white can still get out with a draw. I will show you one other variation, by the way. If I was going to play against the Nachmanson and someone played knight c3 against me, I personally would play knight takes knight on c3, eliminating that threat while getting rid of the knight. Pawn takes, pawn to d5, trying to strike the center and get my pieces out as fast as possible. Bishop to b5 is probably the best move, and then bishop to e7. And here, it is still super, super easy to fall apart here, okay? For example, white should take back on d4 with the knight, creating this threat on c6, threatening knight takes c6, pawn takes, bishop takes, threatening here and here. How white sh or how black should play here is the hard to see move queen d6 violating opening principle by bringing out the queen. A lot of players here. Well, hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. I think I missed one thing. Oh yeah, sorry. My bad. That's if they take here. My bad. Here's the trap. The trap here is if they take here, then rookie one check bishop to b7 now knight to d4 and they have to find this move queen d6 because if they play bishop d7 which is so easy to play in fact this is almost identical to how magnus carlsen lost his game it's now bishop takes c6 and no matter how they take back we follow it up with bishop a3 um and the e7 uh bishop is falling black is going down a piece this is not identical to how magnus carlsen lost but if you look up uh, if you look up nachmanson gambit magnus carlsen you can see the game for yourself but anyway, like I said, I want to keep these games or these videos super short for you. Um, try out the Nachmanson Gambit. Win yourself more games. And uh, yeah, let me know what you like about this video, what you hate about this video. And I'll keep trying to put them out for you. Again, I'm Jesse Cohen, uh, Summer School Chess, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.